Welcome to the second week of our new message series for the new year called Joy Factor. We began last week by simply reflecting on the idea of a happy new year. Whatever else we want from 2018, we want it to make us happy. In fact, you often hear people saying, I just want to be happy. Happiness can actually refer to a vast collection of human experiences involving different levels of well-being. They fall into three categories or levels. The first is pleasure, which takes place in the body. It's like having your favorite meal. At the end of it, you're still going to be hungry. The second is happiness, which takes place in our mind. It's like having that dinner with your closest friends and and having a great conversation, but eventually your guests are going to leave. And the third is joy, which takes place in your soul, the very deepest part of you. God created pleasure and happiness, and when we enjoy them in appropriate ways in our life, it pleases God. But happiness is not ultimately what God wants for us. He wants more for us than what the world can give us. Pleasure and happiness, while wonderful experiences, are only a taste of what God has in store for you and me. They're circumstantial and they're temporary. But joy, well, joy is much more than that. You experience it in your innermost being, your soul. And it's entirely independent of your situation. And if you're open to it, it's permanent. And above that, it can't be acquired by any of our efforts. You can't buy joy and you can't manufacture it. And no other person can make you joyful. Ultimately, it is a gift from God, a sure and certain sign of the presence and the power of God. This is why when you live with joy, it transforms your life, at least gradually, even flowing into your relationships, introducing people to God and what it's like to know God. All of that through you. Your joy is the most compelling case for others to follow Christ. But you've got to pursue it. You've got to open yourself up to it. It's about positioning yourself to being on the lookout for it and to follow it. And that's what this series is all about. Today we want to look at what to avoid when it comes to positioning yourself and to pursuing joy. We want to look at the obstacles to joy. We want to call them joy killers, if you will. And the major joy killer, the biggest obstacle to joy in your life may actually surprise you. To learn more, we are going to look at the passage we read today from Isaiah. He was a prophet who lived hundreds of years before Christ. He lived at a time when the Israelites were forgetting about God and straying more and more from his will and his ways and choosing behaviors that were actually bringing them unhappiness. Isaiah writes with passion, urging the Israelites to return to God. And he does so in a compelling way. He urges people to act in their own best interests. He writes, Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Isaiah paints a very striking contrast here. Light and dark arising from the night in glory. It's a beautiful metaphor, actually. Isaiah compares life without God to living in sort of a constant night, to stumbling about our lives blindly in darkness. Isaiah urges the people to not live like they're blinded anymore. Because the sunrise of God's glory is there. 
Isaiah goes on. Nations shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Why would these people come? Well, for one simple reason, really. They have no light of their own. They see the light that these people have and they're drawn to it like moths to a flame. The light given to Israel is something of an invitation, a release for those who can't find their own way out of darkness. And if people in a whole other nation can see this, you better believe that the light was absolutely brilliant. This isn't something the Israelites just made happen on their own either. Just as you cannot will the sun to rise as much as you would like to, you can't do that. The people cannot put in enough effort and force to bring God back into their lives. It's something that he has chosen to do for his people. It's his gift to them. And we see the effects of that gift. Check it out. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. You see, God is a giver of good things, particularly because he never just gives us things for the sake of giving things. The gifts he gives to us aren't merely a passing thrill. They're permanent. He gives us true and unfailing and radiant joy. A better gift than we could ever get by ourselves. Think about it. We can put a lot of work into what doesn't really work, right? We can invest a lot of time and energy into things that don't really matter. We can spend our money on what isn't really worth our money. Sometimes we even repeat these efforts over and over and over and over again, always hoping for, but never really achieving a different result. And all the while, happiness remains short-lived and joy, true joy, is absent. That's because the major obstacle to joy in your life is you. The number one obstacle to joy in my life is me. It isn't circumstances. It isn't other people. It isn't your job situation. It isn't how much money you have in the bank. It isn't your house or the car you drive. What most kills joy in your life is that you keep working for what will never really satisfy you. For some of you, it's about trying to please people and make people happy. Maybe people even called you the class clown back in the day. You're always joking around or avoiding conflict. Constantly doing whatever it is that you have to do to make everybody like you and not stir the pot. For some of you, you hold on to envy. You're constantly comparing yourself to other people. Your house to their house, your kids to their kids. And you hold on to that comparison and it eats you up inside. And of course, it kills your joy. For some of you, it's anger or a grudge that you carry. Maybe there's someone from your past that you just refuse to forgive. And you hold on to that grudge and you carry it into all of the relationships of your life and it effectively keeps joy at bay. And guess what? Worry can do that too. You stew over potential problems or worst case scenarios and you're way too busy doing that to consider joy. The biggest kill joy in my life is when things go wrong. You may not know this about me, but I have this perfectionist tendency and it sucks. And I'm going to be really happy when everything is perfect. 
especially when it comes to my job and the work that I'm doing. Great. The only problem is nothing is ever perfect. So I get frustrated and hurt and upset, and all too often that is my experience and not joy. You are the biggest obstacle to joy in your life. And the same thing goes for me, too. What is that thing that you keep returning to, hoping that it will satisfy your heart? What is it? Maybe it's a habitual sin. Maybe it's a a self-indulgence. You may have something that comes to your mind right now. And if so, bingo, you have found your joy killer. What is it? What do you keep working for that is not satisfying you? You can't face it unless you name it, know it, and admit it, at least to yourself and before God. Then, in your own quiet time, ask God to help you with it. Then, perhaps sharing it with a trusted friend or a family member, someone who can hold you accountable to removing it from your life. Sharing our killjoys will help us eliminate them. And we also want to help you with this. We need all the help and the grace that we can get to be open to God's gift of joy in our lives. So immediately following Mass today, we will have prayer ministry for anyone and everyone that wants to be prayed with and for. Nothing weird or anything, but our prayer team will just be here to pray for you and for any intentions that you may have, including asking God to help you be more open to his great gift of joy. Sam, Nick, Father Ray, and myself, and a few others will be here in the front of the sanctuary today. So take this opportunity to be prayed over. Let's face it. The reality is that no person is an island. We need help. And we need the help and prayers of our brothers and sisters in Christ. We, we just can't do it. We can't do everything on our own. And, and I know, I know that this life is not easy. The challenges the world throws at us every day don't exactly condition us to have joy. But God can bring light out of the darkness And he wants to do that to your heart today, right now. God offers us infinite joy and grace. And guess what? It's free of charge. Our job is not to try to manufacture it because we can't. We just can't. Our job is to position ourselves to receive it by removing the obstacles that we place in the way. This world can offer us countless pleasures and even genuine happiness, and it does. But it cannot offer a single moment of joy. Only God can do that. And once we have that joy, real, true, authentic joy, this world will never be able to take it away from us. Once we have that real, true joy, the joy that comes from your innermost being, from your soul, a gift from God, once we have that, this world never take it away from you. May God bless you all.